out uh, representing the future and what I think is a very hopeful future. So I have come out uh, and given my full-throated endorsement to make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. Maryland Governor Wes Moore has formally backed Kamala Harris to be the next president of the United States, but he says he has, quote, no interest in being her running mate if she gets the nod. Governor Moore joins us now from Annapolis, Maryland. Good morning, Governor. Good to see you. Good morning. It's good to see you, too. So let me just ask you, you spoke with the vice president. Uh, you told her that you love being governor of the great state of Maryland. But are you telling us that if she said to you, governor, I need you, America needs you, would you join me on this ticket? You would say no. I would I would do anything to make sure that the that the vice president becomes the next president of the United States. Uh, but I'm not going anywhere. Uh, you know, I've, I've said very clearly uh, and very directly uh, to the team that I love my job. I love the work we're doing. And if you look at the progress in the state of Maryland, and we went from being 43rd in unemployment to now having 12 straight months of um, amongst the lowest unemployment rates in the entire country. We've had historic drops and led in historic drops. Of, of violent crime. Uh, we are able to pardon 175,000 people for cannabis convictions uh, because uh, we now we're, people are getting punished for something that's no longer legal. We're the first state in the country to have a service year option. I love the, the momentum that we're seeing in the state of Maryland. I, I, I want to be the governor for the state of Maryland and I have no intention of leaving to do anything else. Okay, it's an impressive track record, but let me just ask under what circumstances then might you join Vice President Harris on the ticket. <laughs> Another way of asking the question. They're, Come they're, on, Governor Moore. Clearly enjoying the question. Yes, Governor Moore. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, and listen, I, 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 appre I appreciate the and, and it's very humbling the fact that uh, that people from around the country have uh, have continued to uh, to put us in the conversation. And, and it is very humbling and I sincerely appreciate it. And I sincerely have no interest. Uh, I'm well, excited to be the governor of the state of Maryland. Well, clearly you are. Listen, you were sworn in in January 2023 and the statistics that you just told us about what you've done in that short period of time, as Vlad said, are extremely impressive. So if not you, what type of vice presidential candidate do you think she needs that, that gives her the best chance of winning in November? I don't know if you want to name names, but if you don't want to name names, you can certainly tell us the qualities that you think would make a difference here and maybe where he or she should be from. Yeah. I, I think that the number one thing the vice president needs to think through is who's the person that she's comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, this is a deeply personal decision uh, and not one that you need to approach with box checking or looking at, well, what does this person give me or that person give me? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought about it when I selected my, my running mate uh, to be my lieutenant governor. Uh, I did not make the selection based on box checking. In fact, many people, when I told them, you know, I picked a woman of color. Uh, you know, I picked a woman who became the first immigrant ever elected to statewide office in the history of the state of Maryland. And people said, well, you know, that's dangerous because Maryland's never even had a black governor before. And I said, the truth is, is that everything seems impossible until it isn't anymore. And, yeah. and you know, the people who weren't going to support me in that way, they weren't going to support me even if I selected a woman of color to be my running mate. So I think this is just a very deep, deeply personal decision that the vice president has to go through. And I think that's the most important thing that she has to, uh, to has to keep in mind. Governor Moore, I want to get you on the record on a, on a campaign matter. And it's a credibility issue potentially for Democrats or polls showing that Americans are not uh, likely to trust Democrats in the aftermath of these years and then months and then days of them telling the public Joe Biden is just fine and he doesn't suffer any kind of age issues. And on top of that, he's going to stay in the race. And this goes right to Kamala Harris as well, who in the aftermath of that disastrous debate on July uh, last month said, ah, oh, it's just a slow start. So how do you address that credibility gap with the American public going forward? You know, my support of, of President Biden uh, really baked on a, a few points. One is, you know, he's just a man of, of, of tremendous decency uh, and honor. And I think that his legacy of 50 plus years uh, to this country and legacy of leadership 50 plus le years is something that should be honored and, and loyalty should count for something. Uh, but I also think this, results matter. You know, I, I look at what's happened even in, in, in our state. Uh, just in the past 18 months where I've been the governor, where we have a measure of momentum that is just completely undeniable 
around, you know, when, as you're looking at the way that Maryland is moving when it comes to economic growth, when it looks at the way that Maryland is moving, when it comes to being able to invest in new industries and actually, uh, you know, bring pe more people back into the workforce. All these things have been done in partnership with the Biden-Harris administration. And so I, the, the, the reason that I think so many people, are, you know, were so excited about a Biden-Harris administration getting another four years and now President Harris, uh, Vice President Harris becoming President Harris is not because we were afraid of the alternative, but it's because we're hopeful for the future of what it could be if you can give us another four years of that kind of leadership. And so I think it's track record that continued to allow yeah, people governor. to know and understand and believe that we could uh, that we can go forward. So what you're saying is we'll see you in 2028 or 2032. <laughs> the forgotten part of my fellow citizens. It is strong. It's my duty to report the true problems of our nation. We vigorously developed this resource to be of great benefit. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. I will be eternally grateful for your support.